John Quincy Adams was an American statesman, politician, diplomat, lawyer, and diarist who served as the sixth president of the United States, from 1825 to 1829. He previously served as the eighth United States Secretary of State from 1817 to 1825. During his long diplomatic and political career, Adams served as an ambassador and also as a member of the United States Congress representing Massachusetts in both chambers. He was the eldest son of John Adams, who served as the second president of the United States from 1797 to 1801, and First Lady Abigail Adams. Initially a Federalist like his father, he won election to the presidency as a member of the Democratic Republican Party, and later, in the mid-1830s, became affiliated with the Whig Party. Born in Braintree, Massachusetts, Adams spent much of his youth in Europe, where his father served as a diplomat. After returning to the United States, Adams established a successful legal practice in Boston. In 1794, President George Washington appointed Adams as the U.S. ambassador to the Netherlands, and Adams would serve in high-ranking diplomatic posts until 1801, when Thomas Jefferson took office as president. Federalist leaders in Massachusetts arranged for Adams's election to the United States Senate in 1802, but Adams broke with the Federalist Party over foreign policy and was denied re-election. In 1809, President James Madison, a member of the Democratic-Republican Party, appointed Adams as the U.S. ambassador to Russia. Multilingual, Adams held diplomatic posts for the duration of Madison's presidency, and he served as part of the American delegation that negotiated an end to the War of 1812. In 1817, President James Monroe selected Adams as his Secretary of State. In that role, Adams negotiated the adams onis Treaty, which provided for the American acquisition of Florida. He also helped formulate the Monroe Doctrine, which became a key tenet of U.S. foreign policy. In 1818, Adams was elected a member of the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. Adams, Andrew Jackson, William H. Crawford, and Henry Clay all members of the Democratic-Republican Party competed in the 1824 presidential election. Because no candidate won a majority of electoral votes, the House of Representatives held a contingent election, which Adams won with the support of Speaker of the House Henry Clay, whom Adams would controversially appoint as his Secretary of State. As President, Adams called for an ambitious agenda that included federally funded infrastructure projects, the establishment of a national university, and engagement with the countries of Latin America, but Congress refused to pass many of his initiatives. During Adams's presidency, the Democratic-Republican Party split into two major camps, the National Republican Party, which supported Adams, and Andrew Jackson's Democratic Party. The Democrats proved to be more effective political organizers than Adams and his National Republican supporters, and Jackson soundly defeated Adams in the 1828 presidential election, making Adams the second president to fail to win re-election, his father being the first. Rather than retiring from public service, Adams won election to the House of Representatives, where he would serve from 1831 until his death in 1848. He remains the only former president to be elected to the chamber. After narrowly losing his bids for governor of Massachusetts and Senate re-election, Adams joined the anti-Masonic party in the early 1830s before joining the Whig party, which united those opposed to President Jackson. During his time in Congress, Adams became increasingly critical of slavery and of the Southern leaders whom he believed controlled the Democratic Party. He was particularly opposed to the annexation of Texas and the Mexican-American War, which he saw as a war to extend slavery and its political grip on Congress. He also led the repeal of the gag rule, which had prevented the House of Representatives from debating petitions to abolish slavery. Historians concur that Adams was one of the greatest diplomats and secretaries of state in American history, they typically rank him as an average president, as he had an ambitious agenda but could not get it passed by Congress. By contrast, historians also view Adams in a more positive light during his post-presidency because of his vehement stance against slavery, 
as well as his fight for the rights of women and Native Americans. On July 11, 1767, John Quincy Adams was born in Braintree, Massachusetts to Abigail and John Adams. Over the course of his lifetime, Adams witnessed the American Revolution, the evolution of the new nation, and the crawl toward civil war almost his entire life was devoted to public service. While he is remembered as vocal opponent of slavery, the reality was more complicated. Adams began his diplomatic training at 10 years old, when he traveled to Europe with his father. In 1781, he made his way east to Russia to serve as secretary and translator for diplomat Francis Dana. Two years later, he returned to Paris, this time as his father's official secretary during negotiations to end the Revolutionary War. While in Europe, he attended school and gained fluency in French, Dutch, and German. When he returned home in 1785, he quickly completed his training at Harvard and graduated two years later. Adams spent a few years working as a lawyer before President George Washington appointed him U.S. Minister to Holland. He followed that diplomatic appointment with another in Prussia during his father's presidency. Before traveling to Prussia, Adams married Louisa Catherine Johnson, the daughter of the first U.S. consul to Great Britain. John Quincy and Louisa Catherine had four children together. When Thomas Jefferson defeated John Adams in the presidential election of 1800, Adams resigned and returned home to run for a seat in the Massachusetts legislature. In 1803, he was appointed to the U.S. Senate, where he bucked party lines, sided with Jefferson, and supported the Louisiana Purchase. In return for his allegiance to the Democratic-Republican Party, President James Madison appointed Adams as the first official U.S. minister to Russia. While abroad, he negotiated the Treaty of Ghent, which ended the War of 1812, and served as the U.S. minister to Great Britain. When the Adamses returned to Washington, D.C. in 1817, John Quincy Adams served as Secretary of State for President James Monroe. He authored the Monroe Doctrine, which declared the United States' intention to resist European intervention in Latin America. He worked to acquire Florida for the United States and improve Anglo-American relations by settling the border dispute in Oregon country. He was one of the most accomplished and successful secretaries of state in American history. During the Adamses's time abroad, slavery had expanded into most homes and the district was a thriving hub for the domestic slave trade. The Adamses first rented a home, before purchasing a house at 244 F Street, previously occupied by President James Monroe. They were surrounded by enslaved people and the slave trade. They lived one block from the Washington jail that served as a prison and slave pen, their close friends and neighbors owned enslaved people, and they attended parties and diplomatic events hosted by many prominent slave-owning families, including the Talos and Calhoun's parties made possible by enslaved labor. In 1824, Adams won a bitter election over Andrew Jackson. As president, Adams advocated for internal improvements, such as a national road and a network of canals. Most of his proposals were ahead of his time and rejected by Congress. While the Adamses lived in the White House, Louisa Catherine's niece and nephew lived with them, and they brought two enslaved people, Holsey and Rachel Clark, that they had inherited from their father. While Adams opposed slavery as a political issue, the enslaved individuals inherited by his niece and nephew likely offered a relationship of convenience he did not have to purchase them, he did not have to pay someone for their labor, and he avoided hiring additional wage-earning servants. In 1828, Jackson defeated Adams' re-election, but his retirement from public life was short-lived. Two years later, he ran for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives and spent the next two decades railing against slavery, the power of the slavocracy, and the gag rule that stifled debate on the issue in Congress. Because of his age and personal history of service, Southerners could not threaten him with physical violence, like they did to other Northern congressmen which Adams knew and enjoyed immensely as he exploited this privileged position. In 1841, he argued in front of the Supreme Court in the United States v. Amistad case and won the release of enslaved African captives. On February 21, 1848, 
John Quincy Adams suffered a stroke while sitting at his desk on the floor of the House of Representatives. He was moved to the Speaker's room in the Capitol building, when he fell into a coma. He died two days later on February 23, 1848. Adams and Louisa had three sons and a daughter. Their daughter, Louisa, was born in 1811, but died in 1812, from unknown reasons. They named their first son George Washington Adams, 1801-1829, after the first president. This decision upset Adams's mother, and, by her account, his father as well. Both George and their second son, John, 1803-1834, led troubled lives and died in early adulthood. George, who had long suffered from alcoholism, died in 1829 after going overboard on a steamboat, it is not clear whether he fell or purposely jumped from the boat. John, who ran an unprofitable flour and grist mill owned by his father, died of an unknown illness in 1834. Adams's youngest son, Charles Francis Adams Sr., was an important leader of the Conscience Whigs, a northern, anti-slavery faction of the Whig Party. Charles served as the Free Soil Party's vice presidential candidate in the 1848 presidential election and later became a prominent member of the Republican Party, serving as United States Minister to England during the American Civil War. Adams's personality and political beliefs were much like his father's. He always preferred solitary reading to social engagements, and he was repeatedly persuaded to stay in public service by others. Historian Paul Nagel states that, like Abraham Lincoln after him, Adams often suffered from depression, for which he sought treatment in early years. Adams thought his depression was due to the high expectations demanded of him by his father and mother. Throughout his life, he felt inadequate and socially awkward because of his depression, and was constantly bothered by his physical appearance. He was closer to his father, with whom he spent much of his early life while abroad, than he was to his mother. In his youth, while the American Revolution raged on, Adams heard from his mother about his father's work and the substantial risks he took to support it. As a result, he developed a deep respect for his father. In contrast, Adams had a rocky relationship with his mother, due to her high expectations of him, and her fear that her children would follow in the footsteps of her brother, who died of alcoholism. His biographer, Nagel, concludes that his mother's disapproval of Louisa Johnson motivated him to marry Johnson in 1797, despite Adams's reservations that Johnson, like his mother, had a forceful personality. Though Adams wore a powdered wig tied in a queue in his youth, he abandoned this fashion while serving as the U.S. Minister to Russia, 1809-1814, and became the first president to adopt a short haircut instead of long hair tied in a queue and to regularly wear long trousers instead of knee breeches according to the fashion of the 19th century. It has been suggested that John Quincy Adams had the highest IQ of any U.S. president. 229-230 Dean Simonton, a professor of psychology at UC Davis, estimated his IQ score at 165. 231 He reportedly spoke eight foreign languages, Dutch, French, German, Greek, Italian, Latin, Russian, and Spanish, more than any other U.S. president. He remains the only U.S. president who could converse in Russian. Adams is widely regarded as one of the most effective diplomats and secretaries of state in American history 233-234 but scholars generally rank him as an average president. Adams is remembered as a man eminently qualified for the presidency, yet hopelessly weakened in his presidential leadership potential because of the 1824 election. Most importantly, Adams is remembered as a poor politician in an era when politics had begun to matter more. He spoke of trying to serve as a man above the baneful weed of party strife at the precise moment in history when the second party system was emerging with nearly revolutionary force. Biographer and historian William J. Cooper Jr. comments that Adams does not loom large in the American imagination, but that he has received more public attention since the late 20th century due to his anti-slavery stances.
Cooper writes that Adams was the first major public figure to publicly question whether the United States could remain united so long as the institution of slavery persisted. Historian Daniel Walker Howe writes that Adams's intellectual ability and courage were above reproach, and his wisdom in perceiving the national interest has stood the test of time. He has also been praised as a strong prose stylist, with James Parker describing him as one of the three authentically muddy-eyed and pained by subjectivity writers that the White House has harbored, along with Abraham Lincoln and Barack Obama. The John Quincy Adams birthplace is now part of Adams National Historical Park and open to the public. Adams House, one of 12 undergraduate residential houses at Harvard University, is named for John Adams, John Quincy Adams, and other members of the Adams family associated with Harvard. John Quincy Adams Tower, located in the southwest residential area of the University of Massachusetts Amherst, is named for the president. In 1870, Charles Francis built the first presidential library in the United States, to honor his father. The Stone Library includes over 14,000 books written in 12 languages. The library is located at Peacefield, the Old House, at Adams National Historical Park in Quincy, Massachusetts. An Adams memorial has been proposed in Washington, D.C., honoring Adams and his wife, son, father, mother, and other members of their family. Adams's middle name of Quincy has been used by several locations in the United States, including the town of Quincy, Illinois. Adams County, Illinois, and Adams County, Indiana are also named after Adams. Adams County, Iowa, and Adams County, Wisconsin, were each named for either John Adams or John Quincy Adams. Some sources contend that in 1843 Adams sat for the earliest confirmed photograph of a United States president, although others maintain that William Henry Harrison had posed even earlier for his portrait, in 1841. The original daguerreotype is in the collection of the National Portrait Gallery of the Smithsonian Institution. Thank you for watching this video.